All right, in this video I'm going to um, go over problems uh, for trig problem, trig problems that involve um, Rolle's theorem and mean valley theorem. So uh, we're going to determine whether Rolle's theorem applies on a b, uh, closed interval from uh, a to b. If so, we're going to find the values of c. Uh, and let's look at number 19 on page 176 first. We're given our function sine of x uh, between the uh, closed intervals of uh, 0 and 2 pi. Hey, let's consider uh, Rolle's theorem conditions and what it tells us. Um, first off, our function needs to be continuous on the closed interval. Our function needs to be differentiable on the open interval um, at our, uh, between our endpoints. And we also need to make sure that our endpoints have the same y value. Okay? If all three conditions, if all three conditions uh, are true, uh, then we can guarantee that somewhere between these two uh, endpoints, we're going to have a slope of the tangent line that is exactly going to be zero. Okay? And let's think about sine and cosine. Sine and cosine curves are always continuous and always differentiable for all real numbers. So uh, we know that conditions 1 and 2 will pass. All right, we're dealing with sine function. Um, it's always going to be continuous, and there's not ever going to be any sharp points. It's always going to be differentiable as well. Okay, so first two uh, conditions will pass. Third condition, we're going to test at the endpoints what the y values are and compare the y values. So plug 0 into the original function. Sine of 0 is 0. Plug 2 pi into, the, uh, into sine of x. So sine of 2 pi is also 0. So we see that the y values are the same. The third condition passes. Now uh, we, can, we can guarantee that there's going to be an x value where the slope is 0. So we take our next step. We set our derivative equal to 0. So f prime uh, is equal to uh, cosine of x. So we set cosine of x equal to 0. So cosine of x is equal to 0 at pi over 2 and at 3 pi over 2. And our c value is therefore pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. We want to confirm and make sure that these values lie between our intervals, and they do between 0 and 2 pi. So here we have our answer. Okay, number 21. Again, we want to see if Rolle's theorem applies. So here's our function between uh, the closed interval of 0 and pi over 6. Um, Again, we're dealing with uh, sine function, so we know that our uh, function is always continuous uh, between the closed interval and differentiable on our open interval. So we have, um, uh, we can also, uh, we also need to test our third condition, which is our endpoints. Plug zero into the original function, we'll get zero minus zero, which is zero. Plug pi over 6 into the original function. 6 times pi over 6 over pi, this reduces to be 1. Sine of pi over 6 is simply 1 half. So 4 minus 1 half squared. 1 half squared is 4, is a 4. so 4 over 4 is 1. So 1 minus 1 is 0. So we have our y values being 0 and 0. These, are the, um, these um, uh, meet our third condition. Our third condition will pass. Endpoints will give us the same y value. So f of 0 is equal to f of pi over 6, which is equal to 0. Okay, so now our next step, we can now guarantee that there's going to be at least a point where the slope of the tangent line is going to be 0. Um, uh, so we set our derivative equal to 0. I'm going to rewrite my function in a form where I can apply derivative rule, uh, our derivative rules easily. So 6 over 6x six x, six x over pi, I'm going to rewrite it as 6 over pi x. I like to pull the leading coefficient in front and know that I'm just dealing with the derivative of x. And I'm also going to pull the uh, exponent 2 outside uh, the sine x function to help remind us that we have to go through chain rule. So 6 over pi times x, the derivative of 6 over pi times x is simply 6 over pi. Right. Um, here we are, go through chain rule, bring down the 2, keep the parentheses, keep the bracket, Multiply by the inner function derivative, so sine uh, times cosine. So 6 over pi minus 8 sine of x cosine of x. All right. We set our der derivative equal to 0. 
and then we take steps to begin to try and solve for x. I move the six over well, I move the eight um, six over pi over to the left side um, and divide both sides by negative one, so I get six over pi is equal to eight sine of x cosine of x. We can actually um, use double angle formula to um, to re to uh, simplify this because we have two x's here. We want to try to get it down to one x. So if we know um, double angle formula, we can pull out a 4, make this a 2 sine of x cosine of x, and this can be rewritten as sine of 2x. Okay. Once we have that, then we can, our goal is to try to solve for x. Okay. Divide both sides by 4. So divide both sides by 4, we get 3 over 2 pi is equal to sine of 2x. Okay. We want to solve for 2x first, so we want to move sine to the other side. We can think of it in terms of inverse cosine. So inverse cosine of 3 over 2 pi is equal to 2x. This we can plug in our calculator. Okay, make sure that in your calculator that this is in radian mode. Okay, so inverse sine of 3 over 2 pi, you get 0.4978 is equal to 2x. Divide both sides by 2, you get 0.249. So c is equal to 0 0.249. 0 0.249 does lie between our closed interval. So now we have our answer there. Okay. Let me also try and go through 27. Okay, 4x minus tangent pi x, we want to see if Rolle's theorem applies. Okay, our function is going to be um, continuous on the closed interval, negative uh, 1 fourth and 1 fourth, and also differentiable uh, between negative uh, 1 fourth and 1 fourth. Okay, note that vertical asymptotes exist for tangent of x, but they occur at negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. And think of this as negative 3 halves and positive 3 halves. These x values are outside our closed interval, are uh, outside our interval between negative 1 fourth and 1 fourth. So these two values, um, even though there's asymptotes here, uh, our interval is not going to be affected by the asymptotes. Okay. So, uh, continuous and differentiable. So now we look at our endpoints, plug negative one fourth into our original function, so you're going to get zero. Plug one fourth into the original function, you're going to get zero. So we confirm that our endpoints, we have the same y value. So we can guarantee a slope of the tangent line to the curve being zero. So set f prime equal to zero. f prime of x equals um, four minus secant squared of u times u prime, right? 4x becomes 4, tangent of u becomes secant squared of u times u, uh, u prime, right? u prime is pi. Okay, so 4 minus pi secant squared pi x equals 0. Um, set pi secant squared pi x equals 4. Multiply, um, I'm convert secant squared to, to be cosine squared. Um, multiply cosine squared on both sides divide both sides by 4, so take the square root of both sides, plus or minus square root of pi over 4 equals cosine of pi x. I'm trying to solve for, I'm trying to get this pi x by itself, so I'm going to have to move cosine over, use inverse cosine. Now when I do inverse cosine, this plus or minus is actually going to be pulled outside. It's not going to be inside um, uh, the uh, cosine angle, it's going to be outside. So plus or minus inverse cosine of square root of pi over 4 is equal to pi x. Okay, calculator, again, make sure you're in radian mode. Okay, I'm going to flip it. Pi x equals inverse cosine square root of pi over 4. Plug this in your calculator. Um, equals to 0 0.4816. 0 0.4816 divided by pi is 0.153. Okay. And same thing, there's a negative version as well. So pi x equals negative inverse cosine square root of pi over 4. Pi x equals negative 0.4816, x equals negative 0.153. So we have two x values, um, 0.153 and negative 0.153, and both these values fall within our um, closed interval of negative 1 fourth and 1 fourth.